to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. You will find it in the church. If you are looking for family, you will find it in the church. Apostle, but my biggest pain has come from the church. That is because the devil also came to the church. So we have to get him out of the church. He's not invited. There are people today when they lose loved ones, they have nobody to come and mourn with them but the church. There are people today when it's time for celebration, marriage, children, whatever it is, it is the church that comes to rally around them. There are people when they are in pains today, nobody can stand but the church. Never you ignore the church as an institution. The church is that one family. There are two kinds of families on earth. There is the physical family that is of biological origin, but there is the spiritual family. The spiritual family is a real family. If you are in church, you must have this family mentality. Coming to church is like coming home. The only place where God can accept you as you are while he's changing you. Can I tell you this? If you ignore the church, there are many things you will not be able to achieve. There are times that your fire can go down and then you come to the church and you sit down. You know, sitting and hearing the testimonies of these precious people and I'm wondering, what if there was no church? There was no church for three months and some people did not just backslide. They just went completely. It's like they... Do you know that Moses' absence for 90 days... You know what he came back and met? These were people who were calling upon Yahweh. Moses went up the mountain, not that he went to sleep. He went to meet God. He came back and found an idol that was made with the precious gold that God gave them. And they said, this be the God that brought us out of Egypt. Moses was angry. He made them grind that thing to powder and drink it. And God punished him because of it. You, you, you see how this thing works? He had to go and carve that rock by himself. Can I tell you this? I know that many of you have been wounded from church. I know many of you have had bitter experiences from church. But regardless what has happened, church still remains your zone of safety. Can I tell you this? I repeat, the church is the safest place. Everybody cannot be a devil. All you need is to find one person who loves you genuinely. One person who loves Jesus genuinely. One person who prays genuinely. And I can tell you there are enough people in every true church to communicate the love of Christ. <clears throat> Hallelujah. It is God's idea and it is his intention that every believer becomes part of a larger community of believers for the purpose of, you see, community living is the key to sustaining kingdom values. It's going to be difficult for you to excel in isolation. So when God picks you, he connects you to a larger body of believers. It is your assignment to connect indeed. This is the place of encounter. Do to me what you want. This is the place of surrender. This is the place 
where my life is changed. Let me tell you this. By the privilege of leadership, especially for many years and even now, largely among young people, I have learned the power of the church as an institution. I have met people who have lost father, lost mother, and literally have had to depend on the church for everything that their physical family would give them. I have had the privilege, and I say this to the glory of the name of Jesus, of helping to raise people literally, some from primary school, secondary school, even university, the church. There are people today who would never go to school if they were not in church. There are people today who would never get a job if they were not in church. There are people today who would never find love if they were not in church. There are people today who would never even be able to bury their loved ones if they were not in church. There are people today who would never have been able to marry if they were not in church. There are people who would never be able to take care of their children if they were not in church. The church is not a disadvantage. Please find a way of, of believing this tonight. The church as an institution. There are people who hate anything church. And they bring all kinds of stories and all kinds of memories. They tell you the church is a place where there are corrupt people. There are politicians. There are devils there. Do you stop using the road because there was an accident there? That is the only road available. The church is a blessing. Jesus is the head of the church. If you don't trust the body, trust the head. Did you hear what I said? Let me repeat myself. If you don't trust the body, trust the head. The body may fail, but the head may never fail. He will never fail. The church is an institution. So as you gather week in, week out, here in Koinonia and all of the churches that are scattered, represented in the body of Christ, I want you to have this mindset. Whenever you pick your Bible, you pick your children, and you are on your way to church, remember this, that number one, the church is a spiritual strategy. Number two, I am that church. In addition to God's strategy, I am the host and then the executor of his will and his plans and his purposes. His purposes depend on me. He can do without me, but he has chosen to involve me in his program. So you don't go to church as a second class citizen. I'm not the one leading worship. I'm not the head of department. I am just a regular worker. Did you know sometimes people send me text messages and they say, Apostle, uh, good afternoon, sir. I am a regular or I'm just an ordinary Koinonia member. And sometimes even when I don't want to reply, I'm tempted to reply, there are no ordinary members here. Everyone is the church. The nature of our work may seem to provide some level of elevated positions, but I tell you intrinsically, every single one, as far as Christ is concerned, we carry equal value, the value and the price being the blood of Jesus. Are we blessed? And I advocate this and I, I cry and call on men and women of God as much as possible Give honor to whom honor is due, but we must be careful so that we do not allow the broken and those who feel that they are no good come to church again and further feel miserable simply because you are not wearing a designer's, simply because you don't seem to speak very fluently. I made it as a personal commitment as a man of God that when it has to do with honor, I will communicate honor to all men and to those deserving of honor. But when it has to do with my disposition towards men, I will treat everybody with love and I will treat everybody with sincerity. If I'm giving a hug, I'm not going to hug you because you are rich or because you are holding an envelope and then hug another person and look at him and almost be asking, what are you doing here? No, no. 
it has never been my philosophy to treat people as far as my attention is concerned based on whatever it is no whoever your father is whoever your mother is whoever you are thank god for your pedigree you would be given honor that is commensurate to your sacrifice but as far as my mindset and my understanding is concerned everybody who god brings to this place is a valuable and a special person in truth i may not be able to reach everybody i wish i could i really will sadly i'm not able to do so but i'm using this message tonight to talk to you and to talk to our global family that as far as joshua selman is concerned and koinonia is concerned there are no ordinary members everybody who was purchased with the blood of jesus is a special and a unique person whether you sit inside whether you sit outside i remember during the graduation of the school of ministry students um I was walking around usually that's what I do because I'm not preaching so I was walking around and I was almost going to look for a place to sit and all these my security and protocol people they would not let me rest they were doing their job you know and I was standing and people were watching me as though it was Jesus Christ and I said come on listen listen I'm a human being my mother is alive my father is alive it is only the privilege of God's grace I only sit here because of leadership, because of protocol, and because of the assignment. The day I'm not doing that assignment, I should be able to sit anywhere and feel comfortable. If I cannot do that, I'm only insecure. It has nothing to do with God. Because my value is not based on the position. My value is the revelation of who I am. Learn this. Are we together now? So if you find me seated somewhere up there and I sit in between two people and I'm listening to the word of God and say, wow, powerful, this is great. Chances are that you can even be uncomfortable there. <laughs> Believers, listen to me. I have an assignment to see that you are grounded in truth and that every time you say church, so for people who neglect the gathering of the believers and they say church is just in the heart. Correct them and say you are right but not completely right. There is something you only receive when believers are gathered together. Are we together now? That corporate gathering, Psalm 133, behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. The Bible says it is like the oil that comes upon the head of Aaron down to his bed, to his skirt, to his garment, and so on and so forth. It says there God had commanded the blessing. Hallelujah. Now there are two things we are going to do before we pray. Please rise everybody. I'm going to give you a little task in one minute. You're going to walk around to as many people as you can find in one minute. And even if it is to appreciate them and greet them and tell them we are the church. You are valuable. You are blessed. Bless them with all your heart. Don't waylay anybody. Go ahead. Make sure you're doing it inside and outside. Honor them and appreciate them sincerely. You don't have to know them. Together we are the body of Christ. Regardless what you believe, regardless what you don't believe, regardless what family you come from. It's a culture. Now please return back to your seat rejoicing. Hold hands together if you can. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, 
Let your love increase. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. The walls of pride and prejudice shall cease. When we are your instrument, Listen to me, let me encourage you. Never make it a culture. Never look down on anyone. In terms of stratification, in terms of finances, in terms of spiritual exposure, in terms of enlightenment, the truth is we are not at the same level. Nevertheless, you should be comfortable to hug somebody whose father is some relegated thing somewhere. This is the church. They should be able to find that kind of love without explanation. Love without reason. The moment you have a reason, it is no longer love. So someone comes to sit near you and you frown your face because you are all wrapped up in your designer. They say, turn to your neighbor and you just look at, don't you turn. No, no, no. You may be saying no to the next 10 years of your life. Can I tell you this? There have been times before, you know, God made me a known face. There were times when people began to hear about me and what God was doing. But because the people had never seen me, they did not know this was the apostle. And, you know, it was not the best of experience. And then when they did find out, that I was that man of God. They suddenly came back with some uh, hypocritical approach. And I said, no, no, no. The first you is the real you. That you that did not behave well is the real you. So make it a point of duty. The first core value in this ministry is love. Not power. Love. Everything is motivated by love. Are we together now? Yes. That when they share the grace, you don't just stand up and carry your children and you push everybody and go out. No. Hello, good morning. Good afternoon. You are going to walk after the service. Oh, God bless you. This is very important. You may think this is just some childish Christian thing, but you may be healing. Someone right now may be listening to me. And finally, people are looking for a home more than a sermon. People are looking for a home. You can listen to a sermon online. You cannot find a home online. There is a difference between listening to teachings online and being in the presence of God here. A place of genuine laughter and love. No pretense. Are we together? It is His will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. Some of you, if you had, if you had your way, you would reject that part of the song. I don't need it to serve. You do, you do. Come to terms with it. Listen, God is not ashamed to declare how vulnerable he is towards us. I need you to be an effective preacher. No matter how anointed I am, your coming here, among the many things that it does, is it validates the fact that we are a blessing. There is nothing to tell lies about. There is nothing to be ashamed about. You see, when people know you are sincere, they will love you truly. But when you are playing games and doing all of these things, the people would let you know they are not stupid. When people come here and there is room for interpretation, maybe the miracle service, the moment I discern they are struggling to speak English, I tell them, say any language. Be comfortable. I'm not going to respect and honor you just because you are speaking Polish Queen's English. That is an advantage, but not the basis for the love. Provided you name the name of Christ, you deserve to be loved. I pray tonight that this teaching will help to build our understanding and make us very, very matured believers. We're going to pray. Our time is gone. Prayer point number one. Lord, help me to be effective as your battle axe 
as the man that you will use in this season please we are praying and then number three as part of this institution called the church lift your voice and pray let it be from the depth of your heart I am your battle axe use me for your glory in whatever way you see and however you please go ahead and pray I will go I will go everywhere you lead me I will go I will go I will go wherever you lead me I will go I will go I will go I am your battle axe to whatever nation to whatever region whatever the responsibility is my soul says yes says yes says yes my soul says yes someone is praying lord i am that available battle axe sharpen me and make me ready to be used especially in this time Lord, if you're healing someone in this nation, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Lord, if you're lifting someone in this city, please don't do it without me. We are praying, don't be tired. Whoever you want to lift, Lord, you can lift through me. Whoever you want to bless, Lord, you can bless through me. Whatever you want to say Lord you can say through me whatever you want to do Lord you can do listen whoever you want to heal Lord you can heal Whoever you want to change, Lord, you can change. Very powerful song. I'm available. Use me for the change. Use me for the healing. Let me not be the one causing the pain, but bringing the healing. Whoever you want to bless, whoever you want to save, whoever you want to transform, oh God, I'm here as your church. Find comfort in using me. Hallelujah. The last prayer point and we're done. Please hear me. We must pray first for koinonia and then for every church as a local assembly and every platform that provides the gathering of believers can i tell you we cannot lose the church as an institution westernization should not be the reason why we lose the gathering of the saints there is a blessing the church is a platform for mentorship that builds that trains that equips 
it is the place where people can find God. The church is a city of refuge. The church is akin to the ark of Noah. When rain was about to fall, they found a place of safety. Are we together? This is your house. Your home. We welcome you. Lord, we welcome you. This is your house, your home. We welcome you today. Last prayer point. The grace to be an active part of this institution called the church. Lift your voice and pray. Active through in gathering. Active as a worker. Active. As, an, as a participant not a fan there are no fans in the church there are active people praying serving bringing souls providing financial resources Lord whatever role I have to play to keep this institution that is the pillar and the ground of truth alive I obtain grace go ahead to pray Pray for every local assembly you know. Lord, keep them. Keep that institution. Keep the building from being idolized. But let it become a center for transformation. A center for salvation. A center for encounters. The house of God. It is only in the house that God has commanded the blessing. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations in your family. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations. Receive it as a blessing. That's what you get when you come to church. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations in your family. Amen. Father, we pray that Koinonia will remain a place of encounters. We pray that Koinonia will remain a place of revelation. We pray that Koinonia will remain a place of transformation. We pray that Koinonia will remain the house of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we declare from tonight's teaching that we are willing to be sharpened battle axes that you will use to beat down the gates of darkness. Lord, we declare that we are the men and women you have found worthy to become hosts of your presence and advancers of your purposes. And Lord, we thank you for this family koinonia we thank you for every church and every ministry represented in the body of christ oh god strengthen the bond of fellowship Amen. bring unity over your body Amen. let all the walls of the divides the prejudices and all the things that divide us and weaken our strength 
I pray, oh God, that they will fade in light of what you are doing. But as for this ministry, I pray that you will increase our bond of love. You will increase our bond of fellowship. That in truth, we will love one another without discrimination. We will love one another without favoritism. We will love one another in spite of our different levels of stratification. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we commit ourselves to love one another. We commit ourselves to loving you. And we pray that in and through our lives, Jesus will be revealed. We pray by extension, oh God, committing our global family scattered across all the nations of the earth. In the name of Jesus, we pray that that bond of unity and that bond of love will rest upon every one of us. We pray for the teachings, the principal channel that you have used to extend your blessing through us to the nations. Lord, anoint those teachings afresh. May they go across the length and the breadth of this nation and across the globe. May they bring salvation. May they bring healing. May they bring liftings in the name of Jesus Christ. And as for you, because you came to church tonight, I decree, may the Lord bless you. I decree, may the Lord prosper you. I decree, may the Lord reveal himself to you. I decree that everything that has mocked God concerning your life, as a result of your coming tonight, I prophesy and I declare that it ceases from happening in your life. I sense in my spirit that there are people who whilst they heard this, our brothers and sisters sharing their testimony of financial miracles, their hearts were just open and they said, oh, that God would step in for me. The prophetic dimension to activating wealth, like I've always thought, is not a license for laziness. But there are times when you are in the sea. There are times when your net is good. There are times when your fishing skill is there, but you will still not catch fish. At that point, you do not need fishing skill. You need Jesus. And for those who have exhausted all that they know to do, and it looks like financial doors are not opening, I prophesy to you, in the name that is above all names, return with strange miracles. Please just help those under the anointing. Everyone here who is sick in his body, the devil has taken advantage of you, not the church. The church is a place where we separate light from darkness. I decree and declare that everything that represents darkness in your life, let it be far from your life now. And everything glorious in your life that you have lost, for, the, for people here, there are people, the proverb, Ichabod, seems to be the proverb around your life. I declare, may that proverb never be heard around your life again. Every business here, hear the word of the Lord. I decree and declare, the grace to excel, let it come upon you. Every dormant gift that is lying down within you, I decree and declare that gift is activated and all those who can discern and reward that gift I call them to pay attention to you hear me if there is anyone here whose spiritual life is going down prayer life going down your passion for God going down don't feel condemned and don't feel like there is no hope for you. This is the church. The place where you find hope. Therefore, I decree and declare. Fresh fire upon your spiritual life. For everyone here who has been bereaved. And is in and through any kind of emotional pain. We decree and declare. Let the healer bring healing right now. And we stand here prophetically and we lend our voices together with many who are praying over Nigeria, over Africa, over Abuja. We decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ that the purposes of God will be established in our land. 
in the name of Jesus and every controlling power over this territory the territory of the FCT the nation of Nigeria the continent of Africa we lend our voices as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ as a united force we decree and declare like Dagon fell before the ark we declare that every altar that does not project Jesus let it fall before the ark of his presence in the name of Jesus the Lord bless you the Lord honor you in Jesus name please everyone remain standing let me plead with us just give me two minutes let's be disciplined two minutes let me make the altar call please no moving around just two minutes and we're done there are people here God has given you an opportunity to hear this word tonight you came from various places please let's minimize movement it's it's a culture listen you have to train yourself in the house of God patience for two three minutes will not stop you from doing what you're doing as much as possible whenever the altar call is coming except otherwise let's just discipline ourselves to receive them and then we'll wrap up there are people here across the balcony here in the main auditorium all the overflows and following online you are saying apostle I've heard you teach and I want to become part of the church the church is not just men men who are in Christ men who have accepted the free gift of salvation two categories of people I want to call quickly number one those who are saying I need Jesus as a matter of life and death number two those who are saying apostle my life has gone haywire I need restoration to my Christian experience if you belong to any of these two categories I'm going to count one to five please very quickly I like you to rush and come and stand be very bold don't be afraid don't be ashamed God bless you let's celebrate them as they come who is this king of glory the Lord strong and mighty the Lord mighty in battle amen who is this king of glory keep coming the Lord strong and mighty Keep coming. Amen. For thine is the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For thine is the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, before I pray for all those who have come to give their heart to Jesus, let me just make one very important announcement. Please let me have your attention. By God's grace, our medical team um, is embarking on an outreach to one of the IDPs here in, Kadu in, in uh, I was going to say Kaduna, in Abuja. Praise the name of the Lord. Are you happy? Celebrate Jesus. Amen. Um, can I have Dr. Chai please come he's the head of the medical team please quickly just come now the medical team is searching for volunteers volunteers who will participate in the medical outreach particularly they are looking for doctors nurses lab scientists and pharmacists all interested persons please if you are interested in being part of this outreach is a noble cause when is it the date 4th of December so we have just on Saturday on the 4th of December you're a paramedic you're a medical person and you feel that this is an opportunity you want to be part of it please immediately after the service he's going to be standing right here you can come and meet him and say I want to be part of it and probably you want to just come in and support them in whatever way we have taken responsibility as a ministry but then we're also going to open up doors should you want to do anything without coercion by revelation from a heart of love please feel free to do it and so this is what test running our humanitarian services so the medical team is leading on this and we want to see that we're able to bless the people and to bless God's people there are so many people at that IDP camp and we want to just supply food medicals and see how probably we sink a borehole or two or just do something 
for the community. God is granting us grace in the name of Jesus Christ. So please, immediately after the service, you want to be part of this uh, as a volunteer, please do well to see doctor. He'll be waiting there. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. I celebrate every one of you for coming. Thank you so much for making this bold decision. Please lift your right hand high above your head, and I want you to pray this prayer. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Tonight, I have heard your word. I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that you are my savior, you are my Lord, and you are my king. I decree and declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From today, I live a victorious Christian life, serving the purposes of God and being a blessing to humanity. In Jesus' name, amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these precious people. We love them so. They have come before you, making their declaration to start a new life in Christ. I pray by the authority of Scripture that their sins are forgiven, and I decree and declare that you enjoy the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord honor you in Jesus' name. Thank you and congratulations. May I request that you just move to my right. There are a few counselors who will just attend to you within a minute or two and you'll be back to your seat. God bless you. Let's celebrate them as they go. Let's celebrate them very quickly. Hallelujah. And then... Um, maybe I would want to say this next week by the grace of God the King Dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message Do not keep the video to yourself Share to as many as you can to help them bless Check our home page for more of our messages Subscribe to the channel Comment on it Like it See you on our next video Bye Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salas kade bas kana kata branda kete katos. Kete branda kata pakotos koto pray kete kene kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.